now it's time to talk about the really important stuff that happened this week. Every 10 years, the British magazine Sight and Sound, you know, they, they go out into the world. They go to all of the great masters of cinema, the great, you know, the you know, thinkers, the ones who have seen all the movies or made all the movies. And they ask them, what's your top 10? And from that, like based on how many times someone, you know, said, hey, this is in my top 10, they create their list. And this year, the list looks very different than it ever has. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I guess the sort of main story here is uh, G.N. Dealman jumped about 35 spots to from 36 to 1. And this is so strange to me. There's something hinky going on here. <clears throat> they stacked the deck, I think. Okay. And um, I think it's like... You could say it's conspiratorial, but I don't know. I think it's it's not that serious, I don't think. And I just, I believe that, you know, they're not releasing a lot of, like, details about how this happened. And it's weird to me because in the past, it seems like every 10 years when they release this list, they give less and less details about how it was compiled. Ah. And they're, they're basically just like, trust us, you know. And, like, for instance, this year, we don't know in all the other lists in the past in especially the top 10 they will say how many mentions a film got so it's like you know gn oh. Gilman got you know 100 and 131 mentions or like vertigo got 150 and you know they'll say that but they didn't this year why the and hell not why are they being less transparent i don't know it's very very strange because and they, they're really not that transparent about how this process works and the only thing we really know is apparently between the uh, 2012 list and this year's list, the number of people voting in the critics poll like doubled. Like it went from like 850 to like 1600. And we don't know that process. Like we don't know, like how do you get into that group of 1600 people? Mm -hmm. What are the, what's the criteria? We don't know any of that. Yeah. And, we don't know where these people are even from and you know they claim because they got a lot of criticism in the past for that they need to be more diverse and they claim they did but we don't know what country any of these people are from we don't mm. know their like socioeconomic status we don't know their politics we don't know any of that it's a uh, black box it's just, yeah, it's a black yeah. box. The only the only people we know that even voted in this list are people that have come forward and said I voted, you know, on like Twitter or whatever and and I mean, I guess I get that a little bit because you don't want psychos on the internet coming after people for how they voted, but mm. at the same time, it really really diminishes the credibility here. And I think when you, it's flashed up a, a, you know, a little bit here as I've paused this clip thing, but you know, Paul Schrader really took issue with it he, he throws the word woke around but i guess more specifically he is just kind of saying hey the pool of people who voted was clearly diluted and it put an overemphasis towards certain you know like i guess yeah like you know ideological or political biases that people may have you know which is kind of obvious that's exactly what happened and they don't want us to have a a, a one-to-one -one ability to know to be able to say okay yeah the list this year looks the way it did because the demographic shifted in this transparent way but yeah we don't know how the demographics have shifted and you know i'll, I'll save like i guess most of my comments about the, the the new number one film for when we talk about it in the watch list in just a second here but basically it just seems like a bunch of only fans girls had their oh my god that's me moment when they had the free month of the criterion collection during the pandemic and that's how we got here you know what i mean just the, the zeitgeist of it but yeah like look are you sh like is it wrong that movies like the godfather 2 like have been bumped like so completely you know in in their stature like you know is is it wrong that the vertigo or even the o citizen kane have now been supplanted by a movie that a majority of the people out there you know even if they are film nerds have even seen you know like yeah i mean this, yeah when when you look at this list as a whole in this year's list it strikes me as a list that was made by people who are overly concerned 
with making a list of what they think is best, not their favorites. You know, mm. these aren't like people who are voting for the movies they actually like. They're voting for movies that they believe are in some way like scholarly or or important. And then they're also overly concerned with like the sort of even though this this really doesn't matter. And but they're like, "Oh, like I need to vote for this movie because it's so important and if somebody sees this film on this list it is going to matter you know change. yeah yeah it's going to matter and so if they're overly concerned with like the political ramifications that they think they're uh giving off by voting for certain films and it's like i don't know it's we're moving away from judging films on like it, their aesthetic merits and i fucking hate it so much yeah and um this th this isn't a list of films people actually like or it's getting less and less so it, it maybe used to be but it's it's like films that like you take a first year like a freshman college film course and then at the end of the year the teacher asks you all right what did you learn and this is what this list is <laughs> yeah the it's it's funny that the the, the source of the, the concept I'm going to you know, introduce to this conversation um, it, it's coming from True Film, a place for people who do that kind of thing for fun in their free time and not because they took a film course. That's the, the whole point of that community on Reddit is for people just to get together and navel gaze about movies and agree and disagree with each other. But try and put a little effort into their analysis, you know, and their appreciation of the art form. And this one dude showed up and he was just like, okay, this whole thing with sight and sound reminds me of the the tom wolf book the painted world or the painted word rather and how that was received you know and that book you know was looking at a period in like in like mainstream art where things shifted from appreciation of like great masters like picasso and like realistic or impressionistic work or whatever like art like we would think about it from a hundred years ago and, and until it gets to the point where we're taping bananas on the wall, you know, and calling it art, you know, like that's like what he was criticizing. And he was maligned and painted as being a fascist, you know, like a, like a Nazi, you know, crypto Nazi sort of a person for making that, you know, sort of intellectual criticism. And without irony, another dude pops up in that thread to be like, dude, you're, you're talking like a fucking fascist. Like with, with you know, just despite it kind of being pointed at in this dude's analysis his name was I'm betting that somewhere yeah. in there somebody used the the phrase dog whistle absolutely right? yeah. yeah and and, and, it, and which is unfortunate because the 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 point that am avin some of dat was trying to make essentially was like the that like the i think this film's reputation talking about uh the new number one is it's jan yeah I, I can't say it right jan dealman dealman it, you know, is that I think this film's reputation and critical su success may be a case of the painted or filmed world with people in love with the theory more so than the actual text itself. Because you, you compare this, you know, like this is the Gina you know, Prince Bythewood who did the Old Guard, that comic book adaptation that Netflix had, and then of course The Woman King, and her top 10 looks, you know, pretty respectable. You know, honestly, you know, I don't find it, you know, anything in there too objectionable if those yeah. movies really are her favorite. But then you've got people like her, like Julie Dash, who not, nine of the ten of her sight and sound top ten, you know, were things that I was like, fuck yeah, lady, like, you like some good movies, you're pretty based. But then she just inserts the Woman King in there because it's important to her. You know, not that the movie was any good, and I guess that's what's kind of lost in this. It's like, you could say that Vertigo could be appreciated by anybody whether or not they had a high or low awareness of you know, or appreciation for the form like it, that was just a movie that you could plop anyone in front of and they'd get something out of it and the same could be said for the godfather or you know, even citizen kane but of course you know these lists are populated by a lot of artsy fartsy shit and the stuff that only the real nerds know especially in terms of where are they from are they from europe africa are they from korea you know like, like all of those things you know matter and are important towards getting everyone clued into what's out there but some of this shit did not deserve to be there what's at all and this is an example of that yeah um <clears throat> to talk a little bit about the list itself um is there anything 
I guess just so we're not completely shitting on it. Yeah. Anything that you saw that that you were like, yeah, that you know, that's good that that's on there now, or or that's good that that moved up or down. Anything, anything yeah. that you agree with? Uh, d definitely in the mood for love. I am a, a Wong Kar Wai fanboy through and through. He's he's a, one of the great masters, and he deserves to be you know you know like acknowledged, despite that movie being somewhat recent. Even within his oeuvre, as storied as it is, that movie fucking rules, and I, I I'm glad that it's positioned where it is. Um, I haven't seen Bo Traval, but now I really want to, you know, you know because I you know, see it, you know, because that that was a, a new addition to the top ten, wasn't it? I believe so. Yeah, but yeah, Singing in the Rain, I, I could take it or leave it, but I'm glad that David Lynch has still got some cachet that you know, he, you know he's in the top ten. But I guess what what did you think of it? You know, beyond the number one. I thought, you know, I'm really glad. I mean, this was sort of a given because, you know, people really love the movie, but I am one of those people. I'm really glad that Portrait of a Lady on Fire is on there because mm -hmm. that movie rules. And, um, you know, that's, I think, like around number 30 or so. And so I, I think that's a good place for it. You know, it's the weird thing about this is in 2012's list, Mm -hmm. nothing from the previous 10 years from 2002 to 2012 made it onto the list nothing and this year on 2022's list there is like multiple things that made it from 2012 to 2022 and i guess to kind of transition to back to things that we think are absolutely ridiculous you know a lot of the other stuff that got added from the past 10 years is like what it's just it's just like pop. yeah this list it's so weird how much of this top 100 is not del or is not decided by like the populist opinion mm. but then there's like certain things that are like fucking get out are you serious yeah like, like why is that there like you like, yeah, like what out. business does that have being there because yeah you but have like yeah even parasite <clears throat> you know parasite's an awesome movie but like really like out of the top hundred movies ever made it's i mean it's clear that that movie is going to fall off in yeah. 2032's list like that that movie's not even going to be on it, it it almost shouldn't like they should almost disallow like they, like movies should have to wait 10 years before they can even be on one of these lists i think you know the, the, that would probably be the the more like proper way to do it because yeah, you don't know what a movie's staying power is. Do people still fucking care about the English patient or half the shit that the Weinstein company produced? No! Nobody does! So, like, like, are they anywhere? On, you know what I mean? Like, there, there should be some some time to consider yeah. whether or not something deserves to be there. Because, yeah, it's... The, mind, the human mind tends to look on more recent things better. Absolutely. Like we, we look on the more recent stuff better. So, yeah, it's... Um, that's strange that's i think <clears throat> i honestly think get out because get out is tied for um i think it's like 95th place with like seven other movies yeah and my guess is that there probably was more movies because the further up you go up the list in numbers you find more movies that are tied for certain places and mm. get out I'm guessing there were probably more movies that were tied for like 95th place, but they had they were like, we're gonna cut it off here and we're gonna include Get Out as as our first movie, so that that gets people in the door. So they're basically clickbaiting the list so that yeah. when people, you know, people click on the headline, they're like, Get Out is the first movie, and you know that gets people to click on it and then look at everything else, and then they don't give a shit because it is the rest of the list is nothing like the Get Out. Exactly. Because you know, like, I've just been flashing some of the cards that we know existed for the ballots. And with some of these, they make, demographics, it makes sense. Yeah, Gaspar Knows is going to be totally unique. John Carpenter is going to be influenced by all the movies you expect him to be. And then you get people who obviously didn't take the project very seriously. The assignment didn't mean very much to them. And you got Ty West with what has been called the most basic bitch you know, like, selection of movies you could possibly imagine. But, I guess, should we be shaming him? Or did he, you know, did, did he do the assignment correctly? Because a lot of these make sense to me. It's like, I was thinking about Chinatown quite a bit the other day. 
I was like, wow, why don't I think about that movie as like one of my favorites or like one of the best? That's a good movie, you know. And you know, but yeah, see, Ty West talked about it. But yeah, it's like he probably he's like the kid who does the bare minimum on the assignment. He's he got like a C minus, and uh, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, fuck it, whatever. And, and then we but, got our uh, the true king. I just want to shout out the true king of yeah. all of the ballots that I've encountered. <laughs> SS Rashomuli, fucking Forrest Gump, Maya Bazaar movie. Don't know what that is. Okay, Raiders yeah. of the Lost Ark, Kung Fu Panda, Aladdin, Braveheart, Apocalypto, Ben Hur, Django Unchanged, and The Lion King. This guy knows what he likes, and you can if if you have ever, haven't seen RRR, this list makes complete sense. <laughs> This is the guy who voted for his favorites, not not yeah. what he thought was the best, and that's that's probably the way I would have done it, honestly, mm -hmm. because I don't know, I don't, I don't, <clears throat> I wouldn't deem myself a person <laughs> like how I don't even know how you could even have like the gumption to be like I know what's the best. Yeah, you know? and, yeah, um, objectivity is kind of impossible in this this world, unless you're talking about something different, which is is the movie undeniable. And if it's you know undeniable to you, it might be not be undeniable to other people, which is you know why I think I, I love his pick specifically because yeah, some of these movies are like the, the best movie of all time for very specific people, you know, or you know people who aren't very interesting or don't want to put a lot of effort into see they they know what movies are good for them, so they'll watch Forrest Gump fifteen times, or like they're a toddler and Kung Fu Panda is the best thing ever, you know like. It, so I, I liked how, you know, how, I guess, Holt, he was kind of coming at it from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what about, <clears throat> what do you think this list is missing as far as like either, I guess, specific movies or even like just like entire concepts of certain genres or whatever? Yeah, because there had been a trend for some time that like exploitation movies were like the the niche picks that were getting elevated within lists like this before the democratic shift towards only fans pick me girls you know taking control of of the process but if because like what i have up there is that the correct top 10 that's the the the, the, the critics you know your know, top your know, list that i yes, grabbed this yeah, from they, they, yeah. they separate it out they do a critics list and they do like a director's, director's list. yeah mm -hmm. and this is the critics and i would almost trust the director's list more now that I look yes. at what the critics are into these days. But, yeah, when you look at what's there, you know, it does cover a lot of ground. But it, it is strange to me that we're not seeing any Scorsese there. You know, like a, a guy with you know his track record, I would expect to see him have more of a presence higher to the top. But maybe he's just, you know, slipping in regard... You know, as things shift around, you know, he he's a little his his oeuvre is a little misogynistic in the view of certain people. And that might be not as palatable oh, yeah. to a lot of these new voters in the in the critics, you know, you know, voting you know, pool. So, yeah, like there's, what? Yeah, well, there's certain stuff that completely dropped off. That is uh, of obviously a result of the political thing, like mm. D.W. Griffith movies, mm -hmm. Woody Allen movies. No Woody Allen, no DW. That that no, that's no mind Kansky. blowing. Because like when you yeah. go back ten years and like listen to people talk about Woody Allen movies, like it, 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 it's like a totally different universe because it functionally you know is it was, but good God, it, it's shocking when you look at things like that disappear from this conversation <laughs> in such a short amount of time. Yeah, I guess the the thing that I think is missing here. I mean, there's there's a lot of individual directors you could say, you know, like um, Robert Altman, no Jonathan Glazer, no mm. Cronenberg, yeah, no Tarantino, mm. no uh, no Michael Haneke, no Lars von Trier. Um, okay. You know, th what this list is missing, like genuinely, is the more, the more like, the things that movies are actually made of, the, the movies people actually watch. No blockbusters. I went through the entire hundred, mm -hmm. and I don't think there's one movie in the entire hundred that you could classify as like a blockbuster or even an action movie. You know, there's action adjacent movies, but no action movies, very few horror movies. That's a very good um, point. Yeah, it's like 
this, like I said, this, it's, this isn't like the shit that people actually watch. This isn't even films that, a lot of this stuff isn't even films that, you know, I would consider the arty pick or the artistic pick. It's more like, I keep going back to the word scholarly. This is like the type of shit that, you know, you open a, a, a film 101 book and it's like this film was important because it was the first color film and this was the film that was important because it was the first time you know it's the first african-american director and you know it's it they're scholarly picks they're not like even like artistic really picks mm -hmm. they're just like this film i picked this because yeah it's perceived as being important to the history of film and i don't know we're missing a lot of the stuff people actually watch nowadays or not even nowadays but even in the past hundred oh, years exactly and and i think and that's a part of what like lists like this can do you know is acknowledge you know it's the esteem that grows over time the undeniability that a movie can attain over the years like Tokyo Story, you know, was entirely irrelevant, you know, to Western audiences, you know, until you know relatively recently. Um, you know, then you have Citizen Kane that's been up there since you know the, the the day it came out. You know, and Man with a Movie Camera is just oh yeah, it's the first most important thing. You know, it's a, it, the building blocks of cinema. So yeah, it's very uncreative, and it doesn't really seem like it's a sincere pick when it's just something that you would expect to see in your film 101 textbook what, what is missing is a lot of what art what cinema especially is great at which is stabbing into culture with transgressive works and a lot of the you know filmmakers you mentioned that you know aren't present like the, the glazers and the tarantinos of the world it is shocking that we don't see them there and i, I took it off the list but we were going to talk about a, a an interview that um, andrew dominique gave about blonde and in that interview, you can, you know, I'll link it in some manner because it is interesting. But from his point of view, the whole industry of Hollywood and filmmaking is getting more conservative with a small c. Not in the political sense, just in the the moral and social sense of what is, you know, permitted and allowed. And the, there's a little bit more of a sort of a, a, a tendency within the industry to hold things back, say no to you know, certain creative decisions, no matter what they are and who they might offend. So it's just, there's not an openness within the industry and it's reflected in what made it onto this list, safe choices. People are looking for bedtime stories as Dominique puts it. And these are the bedtime stories for film critics. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, but I guess, um, I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to say, but I, I want to go back to this sort of conspiratorial thing okay. about GN Dealman. And here's what I think happened is you look at you look at polls that are internet based or, you know, whatever and, <clears throat> nowadays. And it is so easy to organize people nowadays with all the tools that we have. It's so look at like the Snyder Bros, Snyder Cut Bros, mm -hmm. and how many like lists of things they've like wedged Snyder into. Like, um, God, what was it? There was that one thing we did a story about it about maybe a year or so ago about how they like got hit, they got like Batman, um, or they got Justice League Snyder Cut on some list or something. Well, it, it won an Oscar. Yeah, Oscar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, the audience vote. The, yeah. the audience, the, those stupid audience Oscars they do now. And so think about that. Think how easy it is to organize people now. And going back to the, the mention thing I was talking about before, about how in the past lists, they used to say like, oh, Vertigo got 191 mentions, and that's why it's number one. Now, and that was that was on 2012's list. 191 mentions is all it took for that movie to be the number one movie on that list. And so now we've doubled the amount of people voting to about 1,600. So in order to get to that number one spot, you probably need about a little less than 400, you know, between 350 and 400 probably. And think about, I think all of these critics or a lot of these critics are all in the same like Slack channels or Discord uh, servers, and they're all just like, "Okay, boys, what are we voting for?" You know, "Okay, guys, what are we what are we voting for?" What you kind know? of statement and, do we want to make this year, guys and gals, and yeah, Zims exactly. and Zers? Yeah, because 
sorry to invoke Gamergate, because that was essentially the same thing, but it's it's whenever you have that like level of like communication and collaboration of not only work but you know ideas and then like how they approach things like this, that's something that's like you know, polluted, you know, like awards processes like the Hugos and like in the Nebula Awards. Like I don't know if you're familiar with that whole fiasco. But, you know, whenever these things just turn into clicks of whatever f form they might take or your know, purpose behind it, getting together to game a system, I hadn't really considered that this could be gamed in such a way. But oh, you're yeah. you're right on about that analysis. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, possible. I mean, these, these are all people who, I guess, would sort of, in some ways, probably consider themselves like co-workers. Like, these are people who, they go to the same press screenings, they go to the same, like... Um, events for movies or like set visits and so they all know each other a lot of them they're on each, each other's other. podcasts yeah they're on each other's podcasts that so kind it's of like, thing it's they're all talking to each other and they're it's it's literally just like okay what are we voting for and and all you need is a couple hundred votes and you have control of the top 10 like you all, the the most you need is a couple hundred some of those movies that are on like the bottom part of the top 10 like the 5 through 10 only need about 50 mentions and you got it you you have that's you, you insane the system and so wow yeah it's 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 nuts it's like this is this was totally gamed like it and they're being so like not upfront about it and and that's a problem it is because yeah. i guess the, the 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 last like little angle i'll i'll put on this you know is because it, it's a it's a problem when you have a disconnect between your 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 critic class and the the actual audience that this that gets to consume this stuff especially when the critics have an outweighed i guess control over what you know, like determining quality gets to become. Whenever you see like, you know, like Rotten Tomatoes suppressing an audience score on a movie, th there, there's a problem there, and and I feel like that they're, they're like I don't know. There's an, an article I added to the document you know about this, where quote unquote highbrow films have been kind of failing at the box office lately, because th those movies are being made for an audience that doesn't go to movies anymore. They sit at home and watch their screeners or they watch it on a streaming site, they're not going to theaters to watch this stuff. Like, the like Tar is an, an unfortunate example of this. People didn't, aren't going to go see that in theaters. You know, he, he's there's a reason why he plays in an art house, you know, versus a megaplex. There's a reason why I can't see the whale in Minot, North Dakota. You know, and I guess like that's part of the problem, you know, ultimately, is that the, 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 a lot of movies are made for the critics these days. Or at least, you know, like the people who consider themselves to be, you know, critics. I'm not exactly a critic. I'm just a dude who sounds off. I, I, I'm not professional enough to think that my opinion should matter to, enough to anybody unless they just choose to listen to me. But, like, there is this feeling like, oh, the people are stupid. You know, like, you know, like the, the general public is just too dumb to appreciate what's out there. But I think that there's an opposite message that should also be received every once in a while. Which is, hey, you guys are kind of wrong about what's good, and you're, they're not giving us anything that we care for. It's not our fault, you know, <laughs> as the audience. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's very interesting. I mean, at the end of the day, <clears throat> I said <clears throat> said this at the beginning, but Sight and Sound is a dying magazine, mm. and at the end of the day, none of this really matters. Exactly. And the Think about before this list came out. Think about the last time you heard about sight and sound. It was, it was when the 2012 list. It was. Came it out. was 10 years ago, exactly. Yeah, it, so they're dying and they're looking for ways to sort of, you know, get the clicks for a week and then they'll fade back into obscurity for another 10 years if they make it another 10 years. We will see. But they're a fucking magazine, so it's like, uh, probably not. You're probably not going to make it another 10 years, bud. Exactly. You know, there's a reason why the blacklist didn't become anything more than a newsletter that gets released every year. You know what I mean? It's like it's yeah. it's it's. I guess it's a website, but it doesn't take as much money to run a website as it d takes to produce and publish a magazine on any consistent basis. So, good luck to them if they're going to choose irrelevancy. That is up to them. I won't say go you know, get woke, go broke, but that's kind of what it, you know, could happen to them here in this instance. 
but we took them seriously and we both watched Jan Dealman on HBO Max to kick off the watch list this week. And how would you describe this movie for the, the people who don't know anything about it? Because I'll be frank, this movie to me was just one of those movies I saw on the sight and sound list that I was never going to watch. You know, because it was just too European and obscure for me to actually seek it out at that time. But streaming wasn't as prevalent. This is not something that I would have, you know, found on Netflix probably 10 years ago. But yeah, what did you think of this? Like, like, or like, what was your perception of it leading into actually watching it? Yeah, so I had, re- I've actually heard of Gian Dealman. I remember in the past, may- maybe a couple times because it is on the Criterion Collection and, you know, uh, Criterion has their own streaming service now. So I think that was also part of the reason why this got so high is because people can just stream it now. And it's also on HBO Max, like you said, because they have some Criterion stuff on there. But um, this movie is fine. You know, it's... um, I'm not going to crusade against it just because I'm pissed it got number one. (laughs) And it's, you know... I, to be upfront, I only, I told you before the show, but I'll just tell pe- anyone watching that I only watched about two hours of it and, and I do plan on finishing it. Um, but it's, it's very formalist. It's, you know, 90 degree angles. Like I'm going to shoot 90 degree angles and I'm going to shoot static images and it's going to be very slow, very little dialogue. And, you know, I'm sure this fucking like blew people's minds in the 70s. Oh yeah, but, totally. Yeah, like watching it now, it's. I mean, it is a little slow. It's three I, hours long. Yeah, three hours long, and I know the point. You know, I, I can see where she's leading with it. it. For people who don't know, this movie is essentially just like a housewives sort of, um, I guess, like feminism, fem, feminism burgeoning sort of. Um, at least that's where I think it's going, and. Um, I don't know. It's fine. It's, you know, it's, it's good. I would even say, um, from what I've watched so far. And I don't know. What do you think? I I think you're, you're right on about it being a very, you know, well-made worthwhile, you know, entry in the canon. It makes sense that it is held in the esteem. It is like you say, it's, it must've been really mind blowing, you know, at the time to have to sit through this, but my experience was polluted by what has become very normal in 2022. This movie is like the urtext for those TikTok girls that will distill their entire day into like a 30 second TikTok. But in the case of this film, it's like a horror movie. It's like, is look at this invisible prison this woman is trapped in and how awful it is. And then I'm just like looking at today and I'm like, wow these women have commodified their prison and uh, i don't know and then because i only way i could really enjoy this movie because it is so dull in terms of action and like what's going on on screen you can't help but just sit there and tunnel in on the subtext and just because it's giving you nothing else and that's probably why we're talking about it right now and it's in the position it's in this is the kind of movie you could say a lot of things about but when you get down to the nuts and bolts of watching it, it is quite something. The nuances of it, as because I've seen it all the way through, are you know very you know you know subtle. And I would say this this thing could have been half as long, but they really wanted to trap you. So it's like ASMR. It's just this the texture of being in a room and touching things and doing things, and that's all well worthwhile and good. At, but at the very least, you do get. A bloody satisfying ending even though they also like it sticks to its its gimmick that final shot of the movie is even more excruciating than the last shot of of uh of uh, uh what's that fucking movie the the uh, pearl like the last shot of pearl like it, the pearl is kind of like the 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 modern successor of jan dealman that like that's my little brain dump if I have okay. have one on it, like I, I guess, but yeah, the, the technically very pared down. It's very intimate in that way, like that bath scene. I, I was you know, kind of enraptured by that in the moment, but very quickly got bored when she was boiling potatoes for the fifth time. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, I'm, in some ways, I'm more fascinated. 
uh, or I'm less fascinated by the movie and I'm more fascinated by Chantel Ackerman, the director, because, mm-hmm. oh my God, this woman is like, so for people who don't know, she was like a de- like lifelong like depressive, and she, you you know, I mean, if you watch this movie, you know the type of person that probably made this movie, and that's exactly who Chantel Ackerman was. And she, for people who don't know, she killed herself in 2015, um, after shortly after her mom died, because she just like she. Her mom was like her only friend, and her mom died, and then she was just like, "Well, you know, wow. I'm, fuck it," and she killed herself. Shit. And so, yeah, it's pretty crazy. And um, I want to—I guess I want to um, to sort of tie this into the sight and sound list. I don't think she would like being on it. <laughs> okay. I think she would—I think she would find it pointless, especially the fact that she got number one. Mm. And we we sort of oh. can we can know that because. Um, in 2012, she was asked to participate in the Sight and Sound poll, and this is what she said about it. This is an exact quote. Oh, yeah. I don't really like the idea. It's just like it is at school. I, I don't understand the desire to classify everything. It is tiring and not really necessary to do these kinds of things. Based as fuck. I respect her so much. That's awesome. Yeah, she's, she's just... I mean, she was... Um, her, she's reflected by the movies that she makes, especially this one. And so, yeah, she, you know, there's there's people who you can watch their movies and know what type of person they are. Like, you know, I mentioned Von Trier earlier, Michael Haneke. And this woman is like the female yeah. Michael Haneke. <laughs> Dude, and God, that's a, a very good point because yeah, this movie is a bit of an endurance test. It's like, how quickly are you going to tap out? And if I personally was gonna, you know, recommend a movie for like a, you know, top ten of all time that should apply to other people, I would be considerate enough to like think about how many of them would actually like out of ten would sit through the experience and enjoy it, versus those that would get up and walk away. And this is the kind of movie that would send probably like eight out of ten to even nine out of ten of people heading, you know, for the door. If you sat them down and were like, okay, now we're watching this. Like, if, if you had your, you know, if you didn't watch it, but the, your Jeffrey Dahmer moment where, like, you, you're trapped watching a movie and it's, it's like, you, you don't, like, you hope that it's not going to, like, I would hope it wasn't this, that Jeffrey Dahmer would make me watch, you know, like, right before he killed me, you know. Yeah, and you bring up an interesting point that, <clears throat> you know, a lot of these people now that are on this this list including her they're dead now and you wonder how these people would feel about even being included on this list or you know a lot of them were probably because this the sight and sound list has been made since 1952 and how many of these directors like absolutely hate the idea that their movie was on this list and hate the idea of voting for these types of things and like quantifying everything you know that's that's a more popular opinion than i think a lot of people um would like to think about and we don't know how many you know how many directors are approached to vote on these type of things and they're just like no no this is stupid this is a dumb exercise you know yeah because it's 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 either you you embrace the fact that you'll be a celebrity figure whether you like it or not you know and try and like profit from it or you can resent it and fight against it, you know, by trying to not participate as much as possible. But you will have your fangirls whether you like it or not, I guess is the moral of the story, you know. But, yeah, I, I appreciate yeah, the, the message that the film had. I appreciate, you know, the, the creative choices that were made. I just don't find it altogether as, you know, undeniably and enjoyable or even groundbreaking enough of a experience to consider it to, you know, consider it to be held where it's held now i understand it being in the conversation just not at the peak like there is yeah. so much more to cinema than what this movie gives i think that it's it's old position was probably just perfect like 36 number 36 oh, yeah. that was probably where it where it belonged and number one no way but i, I do understand why it's gotten a lot more popular you know, because it, it does. I did hear a lot of chatter about this movie during COVID because everyone was like, "Oh my God, me! I'm just as isolated, you know, and I'm, 
you know, resorting to you know the modern version of sex work, you know, on OnlyFans. Like, I that that was just a more common thing that people want to admit. Yeah, and it's a, it's an yes. uncomfortable aspect of our modern you know reality now, coming two years out of that. But in some way, I think it is perfect that this movie is a part of the conversation now, just for that reason, because our culture doesn't reckon with trauma very well. So this just might be the trauma of the pandemic coming back to bite us in the ass by taking from us what we really need, which is validation for Citizen Kane. God damn it. That's what really matters. We have to keep the, the God of you know, the, the, the God King Orson Welles alive on his golden throne somehow. And if we worship false idols, where will we be? 